and take us through the dynamic right now. Is this something that market participants should be watching and worrying about? Well, good morning from London. Uh, yes, I mean, these uh, European elections uh, are going to be uh, crucial. Uh, first of all, judging by polls, it looks like change uh, is coming. Uh, as populist uh, parties are poised to make significant gains uh, in the European uh, Parliament. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, if they manage to join uh, their forces, they would be uh, the first uh, group uh, in the European Parliament. Uh, and that's, of course, a challenge for mainstream parties, uh, which uh, will need to uh, collaborate uh, very closely. Uh, if they really want to advance uh, the project of European integration, in particular with, with respect to the European, uh, to the Eurozone. All right, so take us through the story here, because the, the Eurozone economy is not exactly a, 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 the bastion of strength right now. And earlier this morning, we got some slightly worse than expected data coming out of Germany as well. What exactly does this mean about the health of the overall economy in Europe and how closely are they tied, the UK economy to that with continental Europe, given all that's happening with these elections right now? Uh, absolutely. The Eurozone economy looks quite fragile uh, right now. Um, well, uh, basically, uh, the slowdown started last year and it intensified really in the second half of 2018. Uh, early this year, there were some tentative signs of stabilization, but basically service, and in particular uh, the PMI, uh, including the last uh, reading we uh, got this morning, basically suggests that the underlying uh, trend for uh, um, economic activity is still uh, pointing down. Uh, the current levels are really consistent with growth uh, of about 1% on an annualized basis. And of course, um, all external risks such as an, uh, an intensification of uh, trade tensions, but also Brexit uh, could really derail uh, the economic situation in the Eurozone. And the problem is that at the moment uh, in the Eurozone, the policy space looks quite constrained. So monetary policy is quite stretched uh, and it has probably reached its limits. Uh, and at the same time, uh, there's a lack of a fiscal uh, framework, a fiscal common framework for the Eurozone, uh, which would enable uh, the bloc to face the next crisis more su successfully. So it's really crucial for the next European Parliament to re-advance uh, this integration project. Sylvia, just a couple of moments here. I mean, take us through your base case scenario for how these elections play out and how the markets react to them. Uh, well, as I said, I think that the populist parties will make some uh, significant uh, gains. Uh, however, populist parties are, are also highly uh, fragmented. And actually, if we focus on right-wing populist parties, at the moment they are spread over three different uh, European parliamentary groups, uh, which means uh, that their action, their impact is, is limited. Um, we'll see after this uh, election if they will manage to really bank um, on the gains and um, pull together uh, all uh, their votes uh, and, and, uh, and form a single group. I think that's unlikely, uh, gotcha. but nonetheless, uh, their weight will uh, be able, with their weight, they will be able to disrupt uh, to some extent uh, the effectiveness of uh, European institutions from the inside.